Hello, it's Scott Manley here with episode 27 of Xenonauts, and I am managing my Air Force because I have realized by reading the wiki that apparently it costs 100,000 bucks or whatever for every single aircraft, regardless of whether it is a magnificent marauder or a crappy condor. And so it's time for my old faithful squadrons of condors to be put out to pasture and replaced by the new awesomeness in the form of foxtrots and marauders. I think those are the only two aircraft I really need because the torpedoes really matter a whole lot. If I'm going to be going up against fighters and the marauders are there, but if it's unescorted ships, I can just throw foxtrots and they will take them down. The Corsairs were great for dealing with the uh, enemy fighters, but they're not so interesting now that I have marauders that can equally take down the large ships with their plasma torpedoes. All in all, I uh, got rid of six Condors, getting rid of uh, 600,000 megabucks of upkeep costs, and uh, hopefully making room for some more of the new awesomeness. Now, cash-wise, in the Caribbean, I have just enough cash sitting around to put together another Marauder. But, uh, yeah, in terms of stocks, I only have 12 Alenium, and, yeah, that's not going to be enough. So I need to transfer some stuff over from North Africa to the Caribbean so that we can continue to build out the Air Force and, you know, do all sorts of amazing things. So there we go, 12 of those, and, yeah. That should be just fine. Transfer those and in 24 hours we'll be able to start up the production lines again for one of those red devils. Ah, production of rate laser batteries already. Oh! The Interceptor appears to be a final incarnation of the alien air superiority fighter. Do not be fooled by its deceptively elegant appearance. This craft is far tougher than it seems, and every bit as deadly. The propulsion system extending from the rear of the saucer uses a type of pulse detonation technology to reach speeds of up to 3800 kilometers per hour, and can use vector thrust ports to change direction in the blink of an eye. A miniaturized version of the immensely powerful fusion reactor sits in the central compartment while a hardened shell of alien plating encases the vessel and grants frightening durability while still reducing the overall weight of the armor relative to the earlier design. A trio of deadly rapid-firing plasma cannons and a large missile tube in each wing complete the design, producing an exceptional dogfighter. Fast, tough, agile, and well-armed. It is both sobering and encouraging to remember that it is clearly designed as a spacecraft. While I did dread to think how effective this craft must be in the cold interstellar vacuum, it suggests we may yet be able to build something to defeat it in the skies. Which is an interesting statement, given that we actually had to defeat it in the skies to get this message. But yes, as I said, I suspect that marauders are going to be the recipe for dealing with interceptors from this point out. Aha, production of Predator Assault armor is finished. That means we get to induct one more member of our team into the Spice team. That will be Colonel Mia, shoot them in the back in. She will be now carrying the big guns and delivering the big bullets into the backs of the aliens, as usual. I suspect that it doesn't matter what direction I shoot them from, but all the same, I think it's worked till now and we shall continue to do so. While in the Caribbean, we have another Marauder going into production to join my flight team called the Red Devils. Ah, plasma weaponry. We have been studying the captured alien plasma weapons from the very start of the war, but we have always lacked enough understanding of the technology to weaponize it effectively. However, in recent times, we have come close enough that we can bridge the gap using the favored technique of the intellectually deficient. Imitation. This has allowed us to build a functioning copy of the Graviton emitter that had stymied our progress up to this point. Given our detailed understanding of the plasma accelerator that converts the energy into a plasma bolt and the electromagnetic spiral that shapes the bolt, we were able to use trial and error until we stumbled onto a working configuration of the three components. Small adjustments to the relative scale and distance between these three components allow us to generate plasma bolts with subtly different properties, thus producing different weapons. These plasma weapons are a straightforward upgrade for our existing laser weapons, inflicting heavier damage whilst maintaining similar range and accuracy. In most other respects, they behave much like their predecessors. 
Finally, I discovered recently that the Nobel Prize panel does not disqualify submissions if the scientific advances in question have been stolen from extraterrestrials rather than humans. I estimate that I am now owed at least six of them and would greatly appreciate if you could use these new plasma weapons to keep Stockholm safe until the end of the war. That's very impressive, Doctor. I'm not sure you're going to get the Nobel Prize for peace, though. Anyway, we have finished research on that, so the next thing to research is heavy plasma weapons, because presumably that will then let us build even better spice troopers, and we all know that's where the real power comes from. And moreover, it'll probably give us free upgrade to our base defences and to our aircraft. New manufacturing projects, but not very much cash, because i got to set aside 400k for one of those uh, marauders. So, I can't build a precision plasma. A uh, plasma carbine, borderline... I guess I could put a pistol in the hands of one of my shield uh, shield maidens or whatever. The, the newbies with shield... It's a hard job, so you guys should expect the best weapons. Now, a couple of days later, my newly uh, trimmed down Air Force has to start dealing with, well, has to start on dealing with a full-on alien attack. And uh, yeah, it means we are kind of short. We would normally send up condors to harass the targets, perhaps draw some fire. But uh, at this time, not happening. Using auto-resolve, a squadron of three Red Devils managed to take down a carrier with uh, one missile left. And uh, that meant that I could send them off to actually engage this cruiser quite happily, although it did need a lot of fancy flying to try and get in the six o'clock zone behind this thing. You can see uh, spending a lot of time trying to stay there and not take too much damage. It is surprisingly difficult. In fact, they were still taking a bit of damage here and there. But eventually, eventually using the roll technique, we finally put it down, leaving another wreck on the surface. Now I'm still, uh, I think I'm still lagging behind in terms of finances, so I'm killing off the cruisers using airstrikes. But everything else, if I'm with every carrier, I am sending a strike team down to, to deal with it and make as much money as possible. The carriers are easily making uh, over 150k per carrier, so if I get three or four carriers a wave, that is pretty much enough cash for a Marauder. Good thing is you don't need to sit through all of this, but I had to play through all these missions. I uh, did manage to really put my team together into quite an effective anti-carrier team. Frequently managed to managing to run through carriers without taking any damage whatsoever. Ma being able to fly from one to another without having to stop back at base really meant that I was able to make a lot of money very quickly. And of course that money is being reinvested back into the aircraft. And in turn those aircraft would shoot down UFOs, create more wreck sites, which I would send my teams to. It's kind of like the cycle of life but with alien invasions involved, obviously. So not really like the cycle of life, more like the cycle of alien death. An important part of this whole cycle of life is the discovery that alien corpses actually make really good dog food. Yeah, I think it would be an excellent mod to let you uh, recruit dogs and train them up for specific tasks that dogs are good at, obviously. I mean, after all, it's aliens invading the planet Earth. It's not just the humans that live here. We have a whole host of species of animals that are have a vested interest in having the world kept safe for every species to live on in harmony. And if they ever make the Terror from the Deep sequel, we can have dolphins on your team as well. That'd be even more awesome. So yeah, getting good at this carrier takedown thing. Mia Bakken on her first mission as a spice trooper get, takes down five hostiles, as and Dana with the sniper rifle gets five kills too. She is really killing up a storm there. If Dana can stay alive long enough, she will be a definite spice member. Look, we distinguish service medal for uh, surviving 30 combat missions. Mia is uh, probably out there as one of the best troop troopers I have so far. Up until now, she's really only had a pistol, but I'm sure she really likes the big gun. Anyway, there is no rest for the wicked, or at least no rest for the spice teams. Uh, we have UFOs deciding to turn up over Australia, unfortunately, which is just kind of... We don't have any aircraft there right now because we uh, reassigned the Condor fleets. 
I actually temporarily assigned a, a bunch of aircraft to Australia so that they could actually engage from that location, which meant they had to refuel. Uh, but as soon as they were able to go up, they were quite capable of killing those hostiles. But yes, uh, more of these locations. We uh, haven't seen many snowy locations, largely because the snowy locations tend to be in the northern hemisphere. And it's been winter, so the nights have been very long. So we haven't really wanted to go up there because of the limited number of daylight hours that we have. I'm not sure the game actually models seasons, you know, with snowy areas getting further south at certain times of the year. But regardless, yeah, we just did a whole bunch of these things. I think, I think I've cut out like four or five ground missions simply because I just wanted to make sure I got a really good cash buffer so that I could start uh, not worrying about the cash nearly so much. So the problems of not having a team stationed in Australia permanently really showed up here where uh, my Foxtrot and Corsair team had four seconds of combat fuel left. The Corsair pretty much had to turn around instantly because otherwise it wasn't going to serve as anything other than a distraction. Foxtrot 3 and 4 got off their missiles, but without Afterburner, they were pretty much uh, easy meat for the carrier that decided to strike back at the bees that had stung them. Still, the wounded beast was easy meat for the Red Devils, which had been sent to the Australian war zone. It's not just that the Marauders have extra firepower compared to any other vehicle, they're also a lot faster than anything else, so they can actually spend less fuel tracking down the target and more time actually shooting the target. But eventually everything is downed and all the sites are cleared. We even get Renata and Catalin both working as spice troopers and an impressive haul for this last mission as well. And recognising the aliens' rapid advancement, it's time for us to bring on some more scientists, and uh, we outsource that to China. Paradoxically, it actually makes more sense to outsource your R&D than it does to outsource the manufacturing so that you save money on transport costs. The Alien Plasma Cannon is a large infantry weapon that measures little less than 50 inches in length. We believe it is best thought of as the alien equivalent of a bazooka or rocket grenade, firing a single powerful bolt of plasma that has great range and will inflict major damage on anything caught in the blast radius. It is vastly superior to its conventional counterparts. The most obvious advantage is the increased damage it inflicts. At short range, it can penetrate at least 15 inches of solid steel. Precise measurements were difficult, as we ran out of steel before the projectile ran out of power. In basic terms, it is enough to destroy virtually any conventional vehicle in the world with a single shot. Also important is the ammunition capacity of the weapon. It takes even a skilled operator up to 10 seconds to reload a traditional anti-tank weapon after every shot, while the alien plasma cannon can draw four shots from its battery before it must be changed. The weapon also suffers minimal recoil and has no black blast, making it easier to handle and safer for adjacent friendly units. Thankfully, alien materials are far more resistant against the penetrative effects of these projectiles than conventional materials. We believe the vaporized metal forms a shell around the projectile when it strikes steel, doing much of the penetrating work for it. However, the higher melting point of alien alloys prevents this from occurring and instead the projectile must rely on raw energy to inflict damage. Our more advanced technology gives us some protection against this weapon. Though the wolf and buzzard are not strong enough to protect a soldier from the direct hit, the wolf in particular should help our troops survive being caught in the blast. I have already warned your men about the fearsome power of this weapon. One hopes it will encourage them to get out of the way of its projectiles. And hopefully it will encourage you to come up with something more awesome to send back to the aliens. So, uh... What should the team in China start working on now? Because the Chinese team have been the ones working on reverse engineering the alien weapons. So alien heavy plasma is a good choice. We also have the alien fusion reactor, an alien toroidal reactor capable of sustained reactions outputting huge levels of power. Uh, based on previous unlocks, I suspect that might give me better weapons. But the alien heavy plasma, there's only 15 people, so... If uh, they take a little longer, it's probably... Oh, wait a second, I've got to select... Actually, select the China base and then tell them to research the alien heavy plasma. There we go. Excellent. Now they are off to work unlocking the secrets of the heavy plasma. 
Over with Shrike Team 1, uh, Inga Popova has become the first one to carry the plasma pistol, appropriately named because she is a shield pistol user and uh, likes to pop over and shoot the aliens in the head. Anyway, it's almost April 1st and situation stable, zero continents lost, plus 925 megabucks here. So that's doing good and I guess that guy in the middle pointing at me is now saying, you're doing a good job there. Keep doing it. Keep killing those aliens. Here's some more money. I think the only reason we didn't get more money from Europe is because we've essentially maxed out the region by killing everything. Ah, Dr. Snidely. The alien heavy plasma is 35 inches in length and nearly 5 kilograms in weight. It inflicts no more damage than the standard alien plasma rifle, but has far better armour penetration. This comes at the cost of reduced range and the apparent loss of burst fire capability. The main difference in construction between this weapon and the alien plasma rifle relies in the barrel. The heavy plasma has a stubbier, wide barrel that contains a plasma generation chamber twice the normal size, but an electromagnetic coil only half the usual length. This makes the plasma projectile significantly more energetic and more penetrative than the equivalent from the plasma rifle, but also less stable. It begins to break apart almost immediately, giving it an approximately half the operational range of the alien plasma rifle. However, it is a worryingly effective weapon. Each shot is sufficiently powerful that a soldier wearing jackal armour may as well be wearing nothing at all, which also makes it capable of destroying our hunter scout car in just a few shots. Try to fight aliens equipped with this weapon at long range when possible. Oh, and now they've developed something called Mag Weaponry. Development of a new generation of kinetic battlefield weapons. We believe that these can be more powerful than our plasma weapons. I like the sound of that. I've barely developed plasma weapons, and uh, sounds like it's time to start developing Mag Weaponry for the win. Research level poor. Um, well, in a week or so, we will have another 15 scientists to help you develop this new groundbreaking weapons technology. 3rd of April, the aliens missed April Fool's Day, but yeah, they continue to send more hostiles, and once again, they decide to send bad guys over Australia. A couple of massive signatures sighted over there, so we send a... So squadrons are being dispatched from the Indochina base to head over to Australia and take those things down. And one of these guys keeps hang running in and out of range, making me lose the signal and recapture the signal. It's rather frustrating, to be honest. But I'm hoping if I send my team in the, the right direction, or the general direction, we'll continue to catch up on it. You'll notice that the Marauders, being the most cutting-edge fighter, also have the largest individual radar range. So let's, uh, let's head over there roughly actually no there's the abduction zone so let's kind of hit up oh, there it is intercept and take it down okay we've got that select new target we're going to continue this and let's we have 22 seconds of combat fuel let's tail until it's over land Oh no, Corsair 1 is low on fuel, that means I'm going to have to abandon pursuit of this UFO, whereas, yes, we can auto-resolve. Oh, uh, but unfortunately my Marauder team is severely damaged, so I can't really send it out after that. Oh god, okay, so this one, we don't know what its purpose is, but it is flying around and there is nothing to intercept it anytime soon. We're going to have to refuel one team. Uh, that team has, like, almost no fuel. Yeah, we got a tiny ship up there, but I'm more concerned about the big one flying over Australia. I'm hoping that they're merely on a special mission to study kangaroos and things like that. Because, you know, kangaroos are... I've had kangaroo burgers, so they're clearly a lot like cattle, right? We all know that uh, aliens love their uh, cattle mutilations, right? Okay, so... Oh! It's landed. It's doing something. It's probably... I don't know what it's doing, but we need to... We, uh, yeah, we need to think of something to do. We can't send anything to actually attack that site right now. We do have Shrike floating around. Maybe if we send... If we send it down here, at least it would be able to visit one crash site. Yeah, nothing there. Uh, 
Yeah, and that says intercept. Oh wait, we know we can't intercept it from there. Oh, rapid fire plasmas! How getting all confused here. The new plasma variants offer a generic infantry weapon such as pistols and rifles, but we are still lacking the l an equivalent for high rate of fire weapons such as a machine gun or intercept or auto cannon. The infantry portable plasma casters and the more substantial aircraft mounted plasma blaster have been designed to fill this void. They work on similar principles. Both expel large amounts of plasma in the form of a sustained stream, utilizing a large generation array that continuously discharges superheated plasma. In ordinary conditions it would be difficult to focus the stream and it would dissipate quickly giving it a short range and poor armour penetration. However we have solved this problem by employing a ring of five graviton generators around the muzzle of the weapon. These fire sequentially regularly injecting gravitons into the plasma and breaking the stream up into a string of individual projectiles. This effect replicates the high rate of fire of conventional automatic weapons and combines it with the extra damage of plasma weapons. Both should make useful upgrades in our fight against the extraterrestrials. The Plasma Bolt is a heavy plasma weapon that fires explosive plasma projectiles that inflict severe damage on the target and anything else caught in the blast. It has been used to upgrade our base defence batteries but it can also be mounted on our combat vehicles. The weapon uses an enhanced version of the plasma generation system used in an infantry plasma weapons, making full use of the space available in the vehicle turret. Every important component has been scaled up to improve the overall power of the weapon, though not all have been resized equally. For example, we have fitted a disproportionately large Alenium power cell, which boosts the damage from the weapon but also increases ammunition capacity. The resulting projectile is almost twice as large as the one produced by the infantry plasma rifle and has far better damage and armour penetration. It is also a useful point defence weapon for our facilities. The bolt is powerful enough to inflict damage on a target several kilometres away, and we have performed additional work on spinning the projectile to prevent it veering badly off target over distance. The rotary and force imparted by the helical electromagnets in this weapon is lost after only a hundred metres or so, making it worthless for anti-air battery fire, but we have discovered a second graviton generator can be used in tandem with the first to create a linked pair of gravitons that orbit one another. The entire projectile spins as they do so allowing it to maintain a stable flight path for several kilometers. Okay, go to research screen and we could do the Hyperion battle tank or the fusion reactor because I suspect that if we do the fusion reactor it will give us those extra weapons and I did want that. So we want to upgrade not just the guns on the aircraft but the torpedoes. And apparently I'm getting confused about which Wait a second, what's going on? Oh no, that's why, the, yeah, okay, sorry. Gotta get on the right base. Anyway, we now have the capability of building the plasma caster, which sounds very good. We'll put our people on that. Okay, so Shrike 1, I've decided I'm going to send it to the landing site. Hopefully it will be able to get there before they take off and complete their nefarious task. Will they get there in time? Will they find out what the aliens are up to? Will we find out what a kangaroo burger tastes like? Find out on the next exciting episode of Xenonauts. Until then, I am Scott Manley. Fly safe.